this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Doll. Welcome back to my channel. So we're here for another one of our mass making sessions. We are up to week 123, would you believe? I can't believe we're just flying through these so fast. Um, you know, it only seems like the other day that I just said we were going to do reruns and here we are 23 weeks later. So if you watch my channel, you'll know that we are rerunning um, the other week. So this is week 123 or week, you know, 23, a rerun of week 23. So the um, thing that we're going to mass make today is fabric, hand-stitched fabric ruffles. Now, obviously these, um, you know, for me, these tend to be different to the machine-stitched fabric ruffles. Uh, the machine-stitched ones tend to, tend to be for me, and, you know, I'm not kind of saying this is the case for everyone, a lot more kind of scruffy. They have threads and things like that. I tend to make the hand-stitched ones a bit smaller um, and, you know, I say neater. I mean, that's meant with the um, the biggest, debris, um, you know, kind of, ah, what's the word? Well, just don't take that literally. I'm not meaning they're neat by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so what we're going to do, if you want to join along, you're going to obviously need some fabric. You're going to need some thread and a needle um, and some scissors. And I pretty much think that's it, really. So, um, yeah, let's just kind of get making some. So just going to cut this piece of fabric here now I tend to cut these rather than tear them for the um you know the hand stitched ones the main reason being for that is they tend to be thinner you know I'm using thinner pieces of fabric in terms of width um yeah I'm using thinner pieces of fabric I think the threads would be kind of um almost in the way for a hand stitched ruffle but that's again that's just kind of my opinion and you know feel free to kind of play around and see whether you you know you like to tear yours um but yeah I personally probably prefer to cut them down just so as I haven't got them quite so you know how they go when you tear quite slim slim pieces or narrow pieces of fabric it can go a bit kind of curly on the edge and, you know, I just find that that's a little bit in the way, possibly, with the hand-stitched ruffles. Now, I've threaded a needle, only the one, so you will have to, I'm afraid, endure me threading it again. Now, all you're going to do is basically take your thread, uh, your fabric, and fold it over like that. So a kind of, like as if you're doing an accordion fold. And then you just go in. Now, I tend to go to the back if that makes sense, the back of your fold. So kind of like towards this edge here. And then I kind of like to clamp it down by going through this front bit, if that makes sense. So that then holds that closed like that. So then all you're going to do is fold the next one along and go again towards the back of that fold you know that back edge and then you're going to come back in whoops and then again just go here to the edge of that forward or that front fold if that makes sense because basically what you're doing then is you're kind of clamping that closed here I hope this is making sense I don't know really how else to describe it so yeah go again towards the back of those folds and then again kind of just you know at the front and when I say at the front I don't tend to go through the fold if you see what I mean I go through the the underneath and that just is then clamping that so it's a closed piece and you know that for me just seems to work really well so I mean you know obviously you may have a different way of doing this um, you know, I'm definitely no seamstress. I say this every time I ever have a needle and thread or a sewing machine. Um, you know, so if you've got a better way of doing this, then, you know, absolutely use your, your better method. For me, this just seems to work. Now, again, I don't necessarily want these too neat. So you can probably see I've kind of gone off a little bit at a sort of angle. Now, I've almost done that deliberately because otherwise I was finding my piece was going quite straight and then it just looks a little bit uninteresting. So if you want to kind of make a bit of a curve, just take less material at the top to what you have at the bottom, if that makes sense. 
and then you know that will give you a slightly curved ruffle which you know is kind of more interesting I guess than a straight one isn't it so I mean these tend to be quite small I, I, I tend to do these quite small and again you know that's a bit of a sweeping statement I'm not necessarily saying that you will um, but whereas I kind of make the machine stitched ruffles big you know like to fit down an entire page maybe you know or like a you know a long length of fabric that I'm going to cut down I tend to just make these in I don't know maybe like six inch seven inch strips that by the time they're then folded in oops oh now I've got this caught on a thread or something at the back oh dear no I need my glasses probably ah right just got kind of like hooked around itself I think although it's still not threading through so oh, who knows what's that what that's hooked around well I'm not going to worry too much because um yeah we could be here all day so all I'm going to do is fold that let me put my glasses on so sorry this uh does not normally happen so isn't that just so typical so yeah all I'm going to do is just do it like that when this is glued down that whole mess at the back won't really show anyway so it's fine and then you know you might want to just secure it by doing another couple of stitches through that back bit just like that and that's it that's your hand stitch ruffle and they're so cute aren't they I mean I tend to use these probably more on um, you know pockets or tags or something like that rather than maybe on the um, you know side of a page that said I have used these on on the sides of pages and things and they work wonderfully on there as well so you know they're quite flexible um, you know that you can use them for a variety of things so let's just trim that down so yeah I mean please avoid or oh, excuse my my shoddy sewing it obviously got caught up on something and oh I couldn't be bothered to actually kind of fathom it out so I will just when I glue that down I'll just glue that all in there and it won't show at all so if I just pull something in to just kind of show you that's how that would look just stitched and then all you would do run some glue down along that stitch and then you'd stick that onto your piece so obviously you know like everything that I do these are not very difficult they're super easy um, you know but they're quite fun to have on hand aren't they and to be honest they're just one of those kind of fiddly things that I mean you wouldn't really want to stop in the process of making a journal to come and sit and make a few of these would you so if you've got a bunch of these ready made on hand they're just going to make life easier I think so um, yeah I mean I think they're just a brilliant one to to have on hand so going through that method again folded it over straight away at the front gone straight in towards the back of that fold oops and then straight clamping it closed there kind of at the front of the fold if that makes sense and then again just fold that over like that and then going in at the back towards the back so in at the back of the fabric towards the back of the fold and then in through the front at the front or just past the front of that fold and I just continue like that throughout the entire the entire ruffle I mean obviously you could do kind of more scruffy ruffles um, you know more like the style that we do on the machine I mean I just think these are quite easy to do those ones that we do on the machine I perhaps struggle to do them by hand because then I find that my stitching is um, you know not pulled tight in the right places and things like that so I think this is a good sort of compromise to do if you're wanting to have some ruffles stitching them by hand you know I think these are quite a quite a good one and again I'm kind of going off at a curve with this and like I say all you do to do it at a curve is you pull your fabric as you're folding it you're going to pull it at a curve so you're just going to have like less in one place than you are in another if you see what I mean like that okay and then again just kind of take that through a couple more times 
and to be honest I probably don't even need to knot that because it's gone through obviously a few times so yeah I could probably just cut that off now Oops, like that okay and that's my ruffle now obviously you know you can see my fabric was wider here at the front than it was at the back if I don't like that I can obviously just go in and trim that down now you know it's all quite flexible and um, yeah can kind of trim them around and that's another alternative if your fabric was wide enough if you didn't do the curving when you were stitching it you could always stitch it kind of curved now so you know that's another kind of alternative so I'm just going to have to re-thread my needle already so um, yeah just bear with me for a moment now I tend to use quite thin fabric for this. Um, you can probably see by the fabrics that I've brought along with me today. They're all kind of cottony type fabrics. Um, I haven't sort of brought along, you know, thick upholstery fabrics or anything like that. Now the reason for that is because obviously, you know, you would end up with quite a bit of bulk because we're effectively folding those, you know, concertina folds on top of one another. So if you had a very thick fabric, where you fold obviously your, you know, your folds over, they're going to end up quite bulky, which, I mean, I don't mind a bulky um, ruffle, as you know, because I quite like a chunky journal. Um, but that said, and again, I don't want to make a sweeping statement because next thing you know, I'll pull in some upholstery fabric and <laughs> make some with that. But... I tend to make the um, machine stitched ones, like I say, they're bigger, they're bulkier, you know, they go down the side of a page. These ones tend to go maybe like, you know, more maybe on a pocket or a tag or something like that. So I don't necessarily want these to be too, too bulky because obviously, you know, they're then not going to necessarily sit nicely on my pocket or, you know, whatever it is that I'm going to be using them on. So I'm going to just take another fabric now so yep we're just going to do exactly the same and as you can see again it's a thin sort of cotton type fabric um you know it's yeah I mean I don't know whether fabrics have a GSM or or what I guess they have a thread count but yeah I mean it's probably kind of like a thin cheap um you know pillowcase type of thickness it's it's not very thick at all like I say, I haven't really, I don't think, ever really tried these on a thick fabric, like an upholstery fabric. Um, you know, so, hey, you know, maybe try it out and see see how they turn out. Um, it's not necessarily about making them, it's more about when you come to use them. That I feel, you know, if you're going to be using them then for smaller items, i.e., you know, putting them on pockets and things like that, you maybe don't want them so bulky. But, you know, feel free to play around, feel free to kind of like experiment and see, you know, see what you kind of think. So again, just going to take this and we just fold it. So our first fold over like that, stitch in from, whoops, from the back of the fabric at the back end of your fold, like that. Okay, and then you pull your needle through and then you want to take your needle through here, just in front of the folded piece on the front of the fabric, if that makes sense. So again, just fold my fold over and then just go in from the back and then in through the, through the front there. Whoops, like that and yeah. And then, you know, you soon get a kind of rhythm going and, you know, they kind of get faster actually once you've started stitching it. It's really getting, whoops, she says. Um, it's really getting kind of started, I think, you know, once your piece is kind of on the go, they then, you know, they just fly by really and come together really quickly. So, yeah, I mean, I just think they're really handy to have, um, you know, ready-made kind of sat there, ready to use in your pieces. So again, just kind of going right the way along. And to be honest as well, maybe play around with the size of your folds, you know, and then see what kind of fold length suits you. Again, I'm very random 
with how I do mine. I don't have a kind of like, <laughs> obviously, I don't have any method or anything. You know, they just kind of evolve. But, you know, you might like to have kind of bigger folds. You might prefer smaller ones. You know, I don't know whether that would make much of a difference to how these actually operate or, you know, how they turn out. But, I mean, this one, I'm now just, because I'm talking about it, kind of trying to make those back end folds bigger than the, the front, if that makes sense. And actually, that gives a much more ruffly ruffle. Yep, a ruffly ruffle. Oh, I'm just making all the words up today. Um, yeah, because, obviously... It's got more fabric, whereas when you've got those folds tightly folded, if that makes sense, then basically what you're doing is preventing the fabric from having any kind of free movement. So if you want more, you know, more of a ruffle like that rather than a flat one, can you see what's happened at the back? it's got much more movement just as a natural kind of thing. So yeah, I mean, to be honest, I've never really experimented with doing bigger, you know, bigger folds. But I mean, actually, now I've tried that, I think I probably prefer them perhaps with bigger folds than those tight ones. So perhaps I will try to do the next one with all, all big folds and sort of see if that turns out much more roughly. So um, yeah, I'll give that a try. And obviously I've kind of talked you through enough. Um, you know, there's probably no need to talk you through anymore because they're not very difficult to make or anything. Um, so yeah, let's just kind of have a relax now, have a catch up, you know, see how everyone's week's going and yeah, just have a nice time really. So I hope everybody's week has started out well. I know I say this every week, it must be so boring, but yep, I film these. <laughs> I film these on a Monday, um, you know, ready to go out for you guys on a Tuesday. Um, obviously, at the moment, I'm doing my series of the Shop Your Stash. So, a bit like I did last week, I will stagger the time in of the two videos, if you see what I mean. Because, uh, you know, obviously, that means you're getting two videos from me in one day. Um, you know, and yeah, I don't want you to kind of be like, oh my goodness, she's she's got another video up. What is she doing? Um, you know, so yeah, I will kind of just stagger the times a bit. So one will go up at like my usual time and then the other one will go up, you know, a few hours later. So hopefully it's not quite so, you know, bombarding you with videos really. Um, but yeah, so I hope everyone's doing well. Hope you're all getting ready for Christmas. Oh, I can't believe it. I mean, this time next week, <laughs> it will all be over. Um, yeah, it's really weird. I mean, it's been the most unfestive Christmas ever. And I don't know whether it's an age thing, you know, whether it just gets less festive -y as you get older, or whether actually it just genuinely is less festive -y. Um I mean, I've barely heard any Christmas songs, I have to say. I mean, I think I said I heard one back in about October in a shop and I was just like, oh, come on, you know, playing Christmas songs in October. But weirdly, now it's December, barely heard any. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Um, and of course, yes, I am that terrible person who's done pretty much all my shopping online. So, yeah, I can't sort of, well, I can't really complain about the high street disappearing, can I? Because I am that person who's just shopped really online for everything. Um, yeah, I think I did say... But a few weeks ago, we'd gone to go late night shopping. And I mean, we always used to do the late night shopping thing, you know, when we were young. And, um, you know, it was all sort of part of Christmas. So that one, sorry, just to quickly say, I did the folds a bit bigger. And, you know, it has got a bit more of a roughly texture to it. So, yeah, I'm going to kind of try and do that, I think, with another one. Um, yeah, I know that I talked about this before but I mean honestly late night shopping it used to be such a fun thing and you know everyone did late night shopping and oh you know it was freezing and bustling and oh you know you were all wrapped up and it was dark and oh you'd bump into people that you knew and Christmas songs were blaring out and you know town was absolutely heaving well I mean obviously it could not be more different now the experience of late night shopping 
I mean, it's due to a combination of things, I think. You know, there obviously, you know, were a lot of shops have closed down over the last, like, you know, probably, well, five, five or so years, but definitely the last year. I mean, there's barely any shops left in our high street now. Um, certainly, you know, shops that you actually kind of would want to go into or could afford to go into, you know. Um, yeah, so, I mean, obviously most of the shops have closed now, so we have a lot of coffee shops, um, you know, which is lovely. I mean, we all love going for a coffee, don't we? But, I mean, obviously that's, you know, they're not shops, are they? Um, there's lots of restaurants, um... Yeah, I mean, not so much in this kind of main two streets in the town, but in, in another street in the town, there's quite a few restaurants, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know, really. We, we, yeah. I mean, clothes shops now, where I live. Oh, sorry, I keep on mucking this knot up because I'm, because I'm talking. Um, clothes shops now where I live, I mean, yeah, we've kind of lost them all, really. They weren't doing very well anyway, and um, I think over the last year or... Well, yeah, since the pandemic, really, I guess. Um, we've just lost those last few that we did have. We had a lovely clothes shop called Oasis. I mean, you know, not just we had it. It was a chain. I think the whole chain has gone bankrupt, and um, I think it is still available online. But, yeah, so we obviously lost that. Um... Topshop, obviously, you know, that has gone um, bankrupt as well. I mean, I have to say, not that I particularly shopped in Topshop. It kind of had got very expensive and a little bit young for me now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I didn't really go in there anyway. But, you know, that's another shop that's gone. Um, what else did we have? We had a new look and that just literally closed down, um, yeah, a couple of months ago. So that's gone now, um, obviously several years ago actually now, we had a Dorothy Perkins that had closed down, but of course they've now, you know, gone bankrupt as well. So I guess they're gone from everywhere. Um, what else did we have? I'm trying to think what other shops we even did have, to be honest. Well, I mean, we didn't have a great, you know, shopping centre anyway, but yeah, I mean now... The only clothes shops that we have got now left, and I'm kind of referring to the shops really that I would go in. I mean, there maybe are one or two others, so I'm not sure <laughs> what they are, but you know, I might be forgetting them. And when I say that, what I'm saying is we've got a couple of kind of what I would deem quite posh shops. Um, there's a shop called Mint Velvet, for instance, and oh, there's a shop called Phase 8. I mean, they're quite sort of pricey and so you know I've not really ever been in those shops to be honest so our actual you know what I would call normal shops for the normal person literally we've got River Island now River Island and H&M actually we've still got so yeah that's the only two shops that we've got and we do have a TK Maxx um but I mean obviously that's you know that's not just a clothes shop is it I mean that sells everything so yeah it's a sad 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 state isn't it and you know I mean like I say there's obviously a combination of things for that aren't there but you just do think well this is really you know horrible because I mean those shops are gone now and they're not going to come back are they you know we're not going to suddenly get them back and then you have like the council who you know the council just are still you know, charging for parking and it's like well there's barely any shops to even go to I mean you know why would people want to come and pay all that for parking I mean oh don't even get me started because I know that I've ranted on about parking so many times but I mean it just infuriates me to be honest the cost of parking and um yeah I mean they've put it up now to I think it's four pounds now for two hours I mean seriously four pounds for two hours when you've got no shops it stands to reason, doesn't it? You know, of course, that's going to just kill any shops that are left, aren't they? Because, you know, no one's going to want to go and pay £4 for two hours, you know, to go in the two clothes shops that are left. So, yeah, it's very sad. But never mind. So, yes, I must stop moaning now. So, yep, I've done my Christmas shopping. Yay! 
<laughs> I'm always a very slow Christmas shopper. Um, kind of leave it to the last minute. So this for me actually has been pretty good going this year. Um, I think I kind of felt the need to be a bit organised. It probably helped because, yeah, I did do it all online. Pretty much, pretty much all online. Um, which, of course, you know, I just was able to kind of do here and there, like in the evening and things, you know. And a couple of times I maybe even kind of, you know, was at the gym and then thought, oops, I must, you know, must order this. And was able to just, you know, hop online and kind of order things while I was even there. So, yeah, it's proved very, very convenient. And, um, yeah, obviously it makes it quite quick, doesn't it? And then yesterday, my daughter was at her dad's house and, um, well, he's he's um, got a flat now. So, yeah, she was there. So I thought, right, I'm going to be very organised and I'm going to wrap the presents. So, yeah, I did the wrapping, um, which that's a first for me. I'm normally very much kind of like Christmas Eve or normally it's the night before Christmas Eve. So maybe like the 23rd. Um, yeah, 22nd, 23rd. Or Christmas Eve um, so yeah I was pretty organized to be honest and uh, yeah I feel good now that I have got everything and wrapped everything I mean my sons I have to say you know they obviously didn't really have a great deal because you know I mean as kids get older they don't really need very much do they I mean as long as they've got their phone it's kind of like pretty much it isn't it my daughter obviously she's still of, of an age where you know she obviously likes lots of rubbish. Um, so, yeah. But she's a, you know, she's a good girl. She doesn't really kind of ask for too, too much. Um, but she's also, she's a very lazy girl. So, um, <laughs> she wrote her letter to Santa. And do you know what she wrote on there? This is how lazy she is. She, I can't remember, she asked for, um, you know, one or two things. And then she said, ten toys you choose. She put 10 toys and then she put in brackets, you choose. Now that's because she couldn't be bothered to, you know, look and find things that she wanted. She couldn't be bothered to think of things she wanted. And she definitely couldn't be bothered to write things down that she wanted. Plus, let's face it, she obviously doesn't really want anything, does she? She couldn't really think of anything even that she wanted. So yeah, 10 toys, you choose. I mean, oh my goodness, how lazy can you get? can't even be bothered to write the actual things that you're after so yes um and when she says toys i mean she loves things like you know this year well actually i think they've been around for a couple of years or a few years now there is these things called fidget spinners and squishies and you know these weird 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 things that you kind of like just um i think they're called like poppets and stuff you know that you kind of like just fiddle with really she loves all of those kinds of things. So, you know, when she says 10 toys, she's meaning those types of things, really. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not saying there aren't any bigger items, but, you know, that she, she maybe had in mind. But she will love just, you know, a bunch of those kinds of, um, you know, fidget spinner things and fiddly, fiddly stuff. So, yeah, they're not kind of obviously expensive, great big toys. I mean, these things are tiny. They are literally, you know this big so you know that's kind of really the type of things that she really likes to play with um she loves slime so to be honest anything slimy anything anything slimy anything fiddly anything kind of that she can fidget with um she will absolutely just love so yeah and then the only other toy that she actually asked for so she is that was her letter we sent that off to um, Santa and then suddenly a couple of days later she obviously had seen something on YouTube you know like an ad and she suddenly said oh mum um you know I've written another letter now she said so we're going to have to post another letter I said well you can't keep on posting more and more letters to Santa you know I think ordinarily people just send one you can't just suddenly keep on adding to it as you see things oh I know I know but just this one letter she said so she'd seen this advert for this thing. Um, oh gosh, what's it called? Gotta go, gotta go parrot. So it's this weird sort of, um, well, weird parrot thing. 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a soft toy, i.e. it's covered with fur. But it's not really soft because inside the fur it's plastic, if you see what I mean. And basically, it's sat on a plastic toilet. So, I mean, it's probably like, I don't know, 10 inches high or something like that. It's bright pink, so hot pink colour. And it's sat on a plastic toilet. And it you press a button and it sings this song. Uh-oh, gotta go, gotta go, uh-oh, gotta go. Or something like that. I'm not quite sure. But <laughs> Google it. It's called Gotta Go. Let's, let's, let's go, gotta go or something. Parrot. Um, something like that anyway so yeah and do you know what that's obviously the in toy this year I mean who would think it that's the in toy because it's literally out of stock everywhere and the places where it's not out of stock it's 40 pounds yep 40 pounds would you believe so a few places had it for 30 pounds of course those places were all out of stock it was the places where it's 40 pounds that it's actually in stock Anyway, luckily I think Santa might have managed to get one for nearer, nearer the um, 30 end mark. Not saying at the 30 end mark, but nearer, I, I'm i thinking. So, um, you know, because poor old Santa otherwise having to spend £40 on that. So, yeah, but that's her only, you know, what I would call quite an extravagant or expensive kind of thing that she asked for. So, you know. That's like like her main present, really. Um, you know, if if Santa manages to deliver that, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully Santa will deliver that. Um, and aside from that, she's got like some I don't know coloured pencils and a sketchbook and things like that. I suspect, I suspect she might have some things like that. So yeah, and I know that I said before we're going to my sister's house for Christmas Day. Um, so that will be really nice. All the family are going there. So looking forward to that. I mean, I say that we're going there. I am hoping that we're going there because, I mean, obviously we've got this new variant of um, coronavirus called Omicron. Um, you know, which, I mean, I'm assuming is everywhere really now, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, I'm assuming everywhere kind of has got the same. So obviously it's all over the news at the moment um, about how fast that's spreading and, you know, whether there needs to be another lockdown. So, I mean, providing there's not a lockdown, then obviously, you know, that's what we're doing for Christmas. So fingers crossed that there is not going to be a lockdown, obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, if there is, you know, that's fine. We will just have Christmas, just me and the children um, at home. And yeah, I mean, I'm sure it will be fine. Um, <laughs> Just so long as we know a little bit in advance, because obviously, you know, currently I wouldn't have all the things to make a Christmas dinner or anything like that. And my son just made me laugh yesterday because I said about it to him and he said, oh, don't worry, mum. He said that would just go down in history of us laughing, saying, oh, do you remember that day that we just had those, you know, tins of soup? Mum just opened up tins of soup. Well, I love soup and, um, you know, we tend to make soup quite a lot. You know, we have homemade soup quite often. So I did say to him, oh, that's so cheeky. When do we have tin soup? We do at least make it. So he did laugh. He said, oh, yeah, you know, that's true. But yeah, so um, who knows? Who knows? But I mean, fingers crossed there won't be a lockdown. But having said that, you know, I mean, obviously, if there has to be, there has to be. And, you know, it's better to be everyone safe, isn't it? Than obviously, you know, kind of like go on. Uh, blissfully kind of thinking it's all fine and actually it's not really fine so yeah we'll kind of see but I mean obviously from a you know from a socializing point of view it would be much nicer if there wasn't going to be a lockdown um you know but hey who knows so we will see we will see this is very creased and I could have definitely done with ironing this uh because I've now now really made a not very good job of cutting that. Oh dear. Okay, right. Yeah, made a terrible, terrible job of cutting this now. Oh my gosh, look at it. Everywhere. All over the place. Right, might actually do that one first and then trim it down afterwards. Um, yeah, so anyway, but I hope that everybody else has, you know, done well with their Christmas shopping. Maybe you managed to get some bargains. I mean, unfortunately, everything's really, really expensive now. 
Um, I know that I was having problems getting my glue the other day and um, I think I maybe have talked about this but I'm not sure whether I've talked about it in something you know that I've not published yet so yeah I'm not sure so I apologize if I'm repeating myself but I couldn't get you know the Anita's tacky glue that I always 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 use so I have managed to get some now I've managed to stock up from a, like stationers online um, and I just bulk bought uh, like 10 bottles of it so I definitely definitely have plenty because it had been out of stock for you know quite a while in the range where I normally buy it you know my local branch of the range and it's also gone up in price everywhere so I think it's um, $2.99 normally the one that I buy the size that I buy which is kind of the larger bottle and now it's £4.20 everywhere so I mean it's gone up by like you know over 25% and um, yeah I mean that's just a massive jump isn't it so I yeah looked all on online it was out of stock everywhere but also £4.20 everywhere so there was literally nowhere selling it for any less and most places didn't even have it anyway so I then stumbled across a station you know stationary place which I've never heard of before um I can't remember now what it was called I'm afraid but anyway, they happened to have some left and it was, I think it was £3.20. So it was still slightly dearer than I'd normally pay at 2 99 But it was only 20p. 20p more, whereas the other places were all like £1.20 more. So, you know, obviously go through an awful lot of glue. So I didn't really want to have to kind of, you know, just swallow up a massive increase like that. So, yeah. I mean, let me know what you think, guys. Has everything just got so, so, so expensive? I know that I filled my car up with petrol the other day. Wow. I mean, what a shocker. It was so expensive when I went in to pay for it. Um, again, had gone up by about £6 on a tank of petrol. I mean, that's just ludicrous, isn't it? So, um, yeah, I think we're kind of in for a bit of a tough, tough ride, to be honest. But anyway, I mustn't be moaning. Mustn't be moaning this spinner another moany session but sorry just trying to thread this but on the plus side um i do have another series come in which is coming on boxing day it will be starting uh i will be putting a trailer out i'm not sure when the trailer will go out um yeah i'm not sure when the trailer will go out maybe christmas eve maybe christmas day and it will be starting on boxing day and it's going to be use up. Actually, I'm not going to say what it's going to be yet. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to say what it's going to be. But it's going to be um, a series running from Boxing Day to the 1st of January. So the last one will be on New Year's Eve. Um, but taking up, you know, those dead days, that six days between Christmas and New Year, you know, that always just, or can, can seem a bit anticlimactic, can't it? So I know that last year I did a whole, um, you know, series of use up a whole book in those six days and it was great fun. So I wanted to do something kind of similar um, for this year. So, yep, I've got a series starting then and, yep, lots and lots of fun. Um, on the last day, I think, again, I'm going to kind of bombard you because I think I have several videos that have to go up on the last day just because I was then, um, you know, not on track to finish, if you see what I mean, to finish by the, you know, the end of the year. So, yes, um, everything in, in itself is kind of made, if you see what I mean, but just had to finish it off and kind of put it to bed. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, that should be really fun and I'd really love it if you would join me for that. Um, and I've also, I have now filmed a little something for Christmas Day. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And yeah, hopefully you will enjoy that as well. So um, yeah, hopefully lots of fun things to come. Um, haven't quite decided what I'm going to be doing for the new year. But I'm in the middle of filming another series, so I'm not sure whether that's going to go, you know, straight away at the beginning of the new year or whether I'm going to do something else yet. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to have to kind of see how it goes time-wise. 
because it's not the thing that I had planned to do. Um, but it's the one that I had started, if you see what I mean. So I just want to get that finished. Um, but yeah, anyway, so lots of fun things coming up, you know, over the next um, week or so. So, yeah. So I think what I'm going to do is probably call that a day now for this session because obviously I'm going to be putting up two videos today and I'm just aware that obviously you know you probably don't want to see so much of me that you want two hour long videos I mean I don't know which video is going up today but chance are it might be quite long so yeah you probably don't want to see quite so much of me and have me taken up so much in your whole day but I really hope that you like these little um you know fabric ruffles they're super cute aren't they let me just pull in um, an ephemera piece to kind of show you. Oh, I can't now see anything. Hold on a second. Uh, right. Let me just pull in something. So, right, so I've got this here. Just to kind of show you. Now, obviously, I'm not suggesting this on here, but, you know, you could just attach it onto like a little pocket or something just down the bottom. And how gorgeous does that look? You know, they're just perfect 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 sizes aren't they to go onto like a pocket or an envelope or something like that so you know whereas obviously the larger ruffles i would probably use running down a page i just think these are perfect 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 for finishing off like pockets and things like that so um yeah i hope that you like them i mean obviously i've done abysmally i haven't really made very many uh four six eight ten ten i've made which is not not great but um you know every little helps doesn't it so, yep, I hope you have fun making some and, um, yeah, have a fantastic Christmas. Have a great week, everybody, getting ready for Christmas. I'm sure you're all cooking and doing lovely, fun things. Um, you know, have fun on Christmas Day. I hope you all eat tons of yummy food and, you know, have a lovely time. Um, don't forget, obviously, I have a little kind of something on Christmas Day which I hope that you will really like. And um, yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow for the rest of our Shop Your Stash. See you on Christmas Day for a little something then. And then we have another new series then starting on Boxing Day. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic week. Have a great Christmas. Have a good Christmas Eve. And yeah, see you guys soon. Thanks then. Bye.